the sidecar competition and what a lineup we've got. Marty Baker, of course, comes in in place of Richard Bigot, riding number nine, Marty Baker and Shane Can. The rest of the lineup, Rob Cameron, Mike Cameron, Ivor Matthews, Gary Moon and Steve Jewison. We get underway and as you can see on the far side, we've got Marty Baker slotting into second place, but it is in the lead, Rob Cameron at the moment. Ivor Matthews looking to go around the outside of the water. lead at the moment. As I say that, it is just at the moment because Ivan Matthews has got right on the outside of their sidecar. Pushing hard into that pit bend as we go down the back straight again. We look for Gary Moon to make a move. Steve Jewison at the back at the moment moves through into fifth place. Ivan Matthews right up there trying the inside line this time. Gary Moon now under pressure from Steve Jewison. And Jewison starts to move through on the inside of Gary Moon. Those two together in third place as you go into the top bend for the third time. We've got Rob Cameron again. They come past us, leading their field in a very competitive field it is. All our things still together as a bunch. Any one of those four could take this first seat of the sidecars. Ivan Matthews again tries to go around the outside on that pit bend. And this time he's up the back straight and he's got the edge going into that top corner. He try and cut back across the racing line, but he's not enough room. Driving high over that top end and Rob Cameron's going to get it on the line. I don't know. Well, that was close to the line. We look for our line judges on that one because the front wheels were together as they come across the line. A great effort from Ivor Matthews on a tremendous way to start the sidecar competition. before the next race we can give you some uh, oh they're on the way so we'll give you that after right we move on to uh, race number 14 and uh, according to my United it is who leads by, well, by a whisker. Ronnie Ratcliffe, Jason Scott's up there. Liam Thomas is up there. Six back of the race. Five of these covered with a pocket hanger team. And this is what 250 race is all about. A bit like a 250 Grand Prix, this. With a lap to go, it's still anybody's race. Ronnie Radcliffe in trouble, going backwards, uh, taking big hands from the throttle, but getting nowhere. So, uh, things are sorted out all on top of there for Richie Knight, and Richie Knight either missed the gear or something. Richie Knight going backwards, and it's Jason Stott leading now. So, still anybody's race, Jason Stott. Graham Thomas, who's it going to be? Stott gets there, Thomas second. Mike Nicholson third, Ronnie Radcliffe fourth, and Richie Knight fifth. Well, that was some 250 race. We must have had about four different uh, leaders in that one, but the only one that matters is the man who's leading on the checkered flag.
They come very, very wide on this bottom bend and allow Phil Pepper to go back underneath them. So, a good ride there from Phil Pepper, the youngster from Cornwall, riding exactly well on the Going down that back straight. As we look to see them come round, as I'm sure you can imagine, you can see there is a red flag. The race, in the interest of safety, being brought to a halt. Because when we look at the lineup for race 35, it includes Paul Hurry, unbeaten to get into this final. He's number 86. Dave Mears, 139. Roy Sizemore, 231. Dave Homer, 17. Richard Musson, 12. Mitchell God, 9. Mark Giles, 26. Jonathan Duke, 25. Keith Fox, 175. Ricky Scarborough, 127. Alan Harper, 121. And John Dormer, 76. By the way, we go there with the 350 final. Race 35 is going to be a tremendous start. He lives going into that first bend, but he's now got the rest of the field catching him up. As indeed Keith Fox breaks coming out of that top bend, goes down the back straight with Dave Mears after him. Well, Richard Musson is now moving through it. Paul Hurry's appeared from sixth place up to fourth going into that bend. Drive hard, locks it up in the middle of the bend. Keith Fox then leading as he comes faster. And he's got the inside of Dave Mears. Paul Hurry is trying to follow him. He also goes on the inside of Dave Mears. So Paul Hurry up into third, but look what's happening at the front. Richard Mustard goes after Keith Fox, leading. Of course, Keith Fox so successful in this part of the country on a 350. He knows he's got a fight on his hands today, and it's Richard Mustard. And Richard Mustard goes very good wide. Almost touches the board. Paul Hurry is floating up on them as well. Oh, Richard Mustard looks for an outside line this time. He's gone very, very wide on that top bend. He connects with the boards once again. That slowed him up. It means that Paul Hurry is now going to take up the challenge. And he closes right up on Keith Foss as Keith Foss almost gets it wrong. Well, Paul Hurry closes up as they go into the last lap. He drives hard. He's done a lot of work on this circuit, Keith Foss. He'd love to win this one against such strong competition. But Paul Hurry has got different ideas. And there goes Hurry through on the inside. Paul Hurry has been quick round this pit then. I don't think Keith Potts is going to be able to get back underneath him and Paul Hurry really does look to be in great form on a 350. A tremendous ride for Paul Hurry. He crosses the line in first place. A good ride from Keith Potts. He fought off no more than four challenges there to actually end up in second place. Dave Mears, a very creditable third spot. And Richard Mustin, after what was two mistakes, we saw him hit the board this side, he then hit the boards on the far side, he's ended up back in, I believe, fourth spot. Something that is, of course, in any racing person's head that you want to go out on a winning note. Everybody would love to win this final here this afternoon, even if they don't win the overall competition, because that also goes down in the record books. Luke Patrick has had a very good day so far this afternoon. One disastrous ride where he lost that chain. That, of course, has put him right down in the points, but he's now going to show us what he's capable of. Bill Pinkford goes after him. I would expect John Fitz to just ride a very sensible ride. John Fish in third place at the moment, number 173. He's got a six-point margin on anybody else that's out there in this final. So he'll probably let those two scrap it out in front of him. So it could be a good scrap between these two because Bill Penfold is on 15 points. He's sitting there in second place, or is he? He's now going for first place. He gets to first place. Mm -hmm. Goes to first place on that bottom bend. Well, John Fish, I'm sure, is content to sit there in third at the moment and watch what's going on in front of him. He doesn't want to get involved in any of the tangles at the front because those two are certainly having a great race. Bill Penfold has got to the front once again. Luke Patchell turns in hard and tries to get through on the inside. Oh, John Fish still looking over his shoulder. He knows his other riders going to be closing on him. Well, Luke Patchell this time goes to on the pit bend. So, the top corner proves to be Bill Penfold and the bottom corner proves to be Luke Patchell. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Well, it does look to me as if John Fish may have problems. I keep saying that he's got a six-point margin, so he's probably mathematically working it out. I wonder if he has realised that he's made a six-point final. I had to put a moment ago, but... <laughs> 
far, there's still a good scrap going on between Luke Packer and Luke has gone right up against the ropes. Well, Bill Penfold, I think, got a problem coming in the pit bend. He's now got himself back to the front, but with all those problems that Luke had on the far side, it's now been the number 118, Jerry Pantle, gets involved. Sorry, Penfold, has now come through. Well, we're all strictly trying to work out the points here because uh, if you can see there is obviously some sort of problem for John Fish, but if we quickly add the points up, we've got one, two, three, four, five, sixth place now. The checkered flag will go for Bill Fishbowl. He takes the final from Luke Patchell. Number 188 takes third place, Terry Patchell. Fourth place is Tommy Fishbowl. Fifth place is Philip Davis. And sixth place is number 173, John Fick. Outfit number six is Russell Ng and Andy Ng. Andy stepping in today in place of the injured Paul Urich. They're in a very distinctive mauve and pink leathers. As they get underway from that start line on the far side, it's Russell Ng that's made a good start. Roger Misa coming through on the inside of them and goes into that first corner in first place. Ivan Matthews is right up there now with Russell Ng. Russell Ng drives in hard underneath Roger Misa. Ivan Matthews has gone incredibly tight. I can see that Neville Penfold has moved through into fourth place, but Russell now challenging for the first place. Well, he's just letting Roger Misa know that he's there, and Roger responds straight away and pulls away from him. Ivor Matthews up into third place, but Russell Ng looks to have found another gear, and Ivor Matthews goes through on the inside of him. Oh, they got incredibly got Russell to contend with, he's got Ivor Matthews there as well. All three of those outfits together as they go into that pin bend. A cracking final for this big A sidecar final, but Roger Misa is not getting it all his own way. Ivor Matthews is right up there with him and we know that he can pull it tight in this bottom bend. Roger knows that as well and you can see he's written a brilliant bend. Russell Ng still hasn't given up. He's still right there in contention. Tries to get that second place back again, but Roger Misa has fought them off. What's going to happen on this last bend? Ivor Matthews, we know, has been brilliant on this top bend this afternoon. We'll be looking for a way through. He'll let Roger know that he's there, and then he'll drive through on the inside, and is he going to do it? He's looking for an Brilliant final. Well, an absolutely tremendous 1000cc sidecar race. What a fight for the sidecar competition to finish. So Stanford, Little, Johnson, Knowles, Thomas. Harris, Hopkins and Brooks, that's their right then for the 250 British Championship final. All rolling at the start, away they go and then Reactions has made a good sign. Graham Thomas has gone with him, who's going to get the corner first? It's Henry Atkins who gets the corner first, and Luke Harris is in hot pursuit, going up the back straight for the first time. There's a bite between these two, as Atkins leads them, but Harris in second, Atkins right in mid-track, Harris trying to wind it on to go right round the outside. Now he cuts it back for the inside, Atkins has gone wide, has Harris got through on the inside, Atkins just broke the bite. Harrison, he's to lead from Brooks in third place, Thomas is in four, as Atkins leads him, but Harrison second, Brooks in third, Thomas is in four, as they go up the back straight once again, just a bite between first and second, and Harris again, full throttle around the outside of that top corner, Atkins right in mid-track, Harris trying to come right around the outside, but Atkins rides him over at the moment, there's a bite between them now, they're complete lap number two, it's Atkins who still leads him, but Harrison second place, Harrison again, totally giving to the outside, Atkins locks up and Harris has gone round the outside, can Atkins get back there at the inside, a bite between him again, but this time it's Harris who leads him, but Atkins holding that second place position, Brooks is not finished within third place, he's moving on to four this time, it's Luke Harris who leads by a bite there for Atkins in second, Harris holding this time, Atkins will come round the outside, but Atkins is not finished, Atkins back round the outside, Harris to retake the lead, going up the back straight, four the full time, it's Atkins who leads for Harris in second, they're pulling away from Brooks in third, Harris again trying to come right down the outside once again. The race for line, Henry Atkins wins it. Luke Harris got second, Charlie Brooks is in third, Graham Thomas is in four, Johnson is in five, Knowles in six, Little in seven, Stamford in eight. What a brilliant, brilliant final that was. It looked as if Lee 
Luke Harris had just got it when Henry Atkins locked up upon that pitch corner. Harris saw his chance, went back round the outside, but Atkins was fourth and finished, and he came back at Harris and got back round him up on that top corner. That was superb cross track racing from those two youngsters, and Charlie Brooks was only a couple of bikes behind, so show your appreciation. That was an absolutely brilliant 250 final by two of the youngsters of the sport. That was brilliant high speed racing of superb quality as Charlie Brooks leads them round followed round there by Luke Harris Henry Atkins defends his title again after a brilliant unbeaten display Graham Thomas good performance by Graham David Knowles comes round so show your appreciation the drama before the start of the 350s Tom Ferry is the last to settle for this 350 solo final Scarlet moves away we are racing on the yellows, we're now racing on the reds, we're racing on the red flag, red flag, red flag, somebody's down upon that top corner on the first lap.